Hi, last week I presented to you the most comprehensive Apple Freeform masterclass ever made, part one. If you haven't watched it so far, here is the link to take you to it. Since then, several questions came up and suggestions about what more could be done with Apple's upcoming new app, Freeform, which is currently in beta with iOS and iPad OS 16.2, as well as Mac OS Ventura 13.1. So without further ado, let's see what we will talk about in this video. We have nine advanced techniques to cover, which will massively increase your productivity with Apple Freeform. Number one, advanced or second level grouping. Number two, templates. Number three, editing and creating new shapes. Number four, shape masking. Number five, resizing options. Number six, restricting movements. Number seven, locked backgrounds. Number eight, import and export. And number nine, collaboration. So let's jump into freeform and have some fun. Number one, advanced or second level grouping. I've shown you in part one how to group objects together. With this new technique, however, we take this to a whole other level. With this, you will not only group single objects together, but you will also create superstructures or groups of groups which might contain other groups. You see, in freeform, you can nest your groupings as deep as you want. Let me show you an example. Here in my freeform, I created these nine colored areas for each of the techniques we will discuss today. Each of these is a group, so I can move them around even on the most zoomed out level. So let's zoom into the group for this topic. You see that there is text and handwriting and the colored background, but you can also see the table, which is part of the group. By the way, I will talk about tables a bit more in a second. This table itself is a group and its elements are also groups. Let me show you. First, let's ungroup the top group for this topic. Then you see that the table is also a group because when I select it, the alignment and grouping menu is in the floating palette. Let's ungroup this and you will see that each column is another group. If I ungroup one of these, I will get to the building blocks of this table, which are actually rectangular shapes with no fill background and a black border which I aligned so that five of these form a column. The top one, by the way, has a shade of gray background. You see, Apple Freeform does not support tables yet. What a bummer. And bringing them over from Apple Notes or Apple Numbers doesn't work either because only the cell content will be pasted, but not the cell structure. So if you want to use tables in Freeform, you have to build them with shapes. Alternatively, if you only need to present the table, but not edit its values, in Freeform, I would build the table in numbers and then bring a screenshot over to Freeform. But through this example, you see that it is possible to build a generic cell shape, duplicate it several times, align them and build a column by grouping them. Then you can select the column group, duplicate it several times, align the columns and then you group them into a table. Voila, advanced grouping. I often use this technique for rearranging large segments like each of these techniques that are described in this board and move them around the board. Also, it is a great way if you want to export parts of a board by selecting and dragging it to another app like Apple Mail. Number two, templates. Apple Freeform unfortunately has currently no template support. So the only way you can use templates is by creating a separate templates board selecting all your templates there and when you need them, copy them over. This actually is a low hanging fruit. I hope Apple will soon pick because in Apple numbers, you have the same shape selector and there you can already insert your own shapes as templates. But for now, you have to do this the old style way. Number three, editing and creating new shapes. This unfortunately is currently only possible on the Mac. There you can select any shape and then go to the menu, Format, Shapes and Lines, Make Editable. There you see all the points which define the shape and you can edit them at will. If the point is a square, it is a straight line you will create and if it is a circle, you will create a curved line. You can switch each point from a circle to a square and vice versa by double clicking on this point. You can drag the existing points around to any place. You can create new points by going to the middle of any line and a midpoint will appear, which you then can drag wherever you like. With this, you can create any shape you like. And don't worry, you will not edit the original shape. You are only editing a copy. 
Currently, you can't save these shapes in the shapes menu. So if it is a shape you intend to use more often, it makes sense to copy it over to your templates board for later reuse. Number four, shape masking. With any image, you can use a standard square mask by selecting the crop tool from the floating palette when you select an image. But in freeform, you're not bound to ordinary rectangular masks. You can combine any shape, even the ones you have created yourself as a mask for your images. Here is how. Bring the image and put the shape on top of the image. Select both by dragging over them and then select the dot 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 three dots menu where you will find mask with shape. Here you can edit the size of the mask as well as zoom and position your image. Press done and you have a shaped image. You can also do it the other way around. You can have a shape, for instance in this example the giraffe, and select a more colorful background image. With the same process you then create a way more colorful giraffe. So there are no limits to your creative use by using these techniques. Number five, resizing options. You know that you can resize by dragging the handles on any shape or object. The point opposite the one you selected will be fixed and the shape will resize from this fixed opposite point. That is standard resize. But there are some ways to change this behavior. You can do a center resize on iOS and iPadOS by putting a second finger on the screen. And on a Mac, you press the Option key while dragging. This will start the resize not from the opposite point, but from the center of the shape. Also, you can define whether you want to constrain the proportions of the shape or not. On iOS and iPadOS, you use the dot 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 triple dot menu and select or unselect constrain proportions. And on a Mac, you either right click on the shape and select constrain proportions or you can just click the shift key while dragging to switch to constrained resize. Also, only on a Mac, you can by pressing the command key while dragging, switch to a more granular resizing. But beware, if you command key before the drag, you will actually rotate the shape. And the last option, only on iOS and iPadOS, is that while resizing a shape, you can with another finger tap on any other form and your currently selected form will match the size of the tapped object. You just need to let go of the resizing finger before you lift the finger who tapped the other object. This is a great way to make sure that all the objects you create have the same size. Number six, restricting movements. Sometimes it makes sense to move an object only horizontally, vertically, or diagonal. This makes especially sense when aligning objects. On iOS and iPadOS, you can do this by putting a second finger on the display while dragging a form. On the Mac, you use the shift key for that. Number seven, locked backgrounds. Sometimes it makes sense to have a background like a floor plan on which you want to move objects around without the floor plan accidentally moving with you. You put any image in the background, select the dot 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 menu and then press lock. Now the image is locked and you freely move any objects over it without it being affected by your touching and dragging. Number eight, import and export. When it comes to exporting, there are currently only two choices. First, you can export the complete board as PDF via the drop down menu behind the board name in the top right corner. The other is that with either copy or drag and drop, you can select an object or a group of selected objects to other apps like Apple Mail as an image. For this, I would group the part that I want to export in a super group from tip one. Now when it comes to importing, you can either import via drag and drop, you can do this with text, images, videos, links or even files, or via the image menu. With imported images, you can preview them, crop them, mask them or resize them. Videos or GIFs can be viewed within Freeform, links get presented as cards and you can only edit the URL or open the web page in Safari from here. Now documents are a bit tricky. Documents are always copied into Freeform. They can be exported by either dragging or copy pasting to a local file system, for instance your desktop, but there is no way to edit documents in Freeform directly. So you can't work on documents directly in Freeform, nor can you mark up a PDF in Freeform. Opening and highlighting in the viewer seems to work, but only for a second, because once you get back, the edits are lost, which is sad. Also, every shape markup in Freeform is on another layer than the document. So if you create, for instance, an error on a PDF in Freeform, that error is not a part of the PDF. And if you move or resize the PDF, 
the error will get lost. So it's safe to say that document collaboration is currently not really possible within Freeform other than drag or copying it into a file system, editing it locally and re-importing it into Freeform. Number nine, collaboration. Freeform was touted as a primary way to collaborate and brainstorm together. And it works great for that. You can invite someone else to board via links, which you can then send via iMessage, mail, or other services. You can also define whether that link will work for everyone, that means it is an open board, or only for invited people, which means it is a closed board. Also, you can define whether the invite is read-only or whether the participants can collaborate and write on the board. Once another participant has joined a board, you can see them in the collaboration menu. Each participant gets a color. So when someone is using any object, the others will see the object in brackets which are color coded for each participant, as well as the name or abbreviation of the person. For this to work, you need to switch on the option participant cursors in the collaboration menu. There, you can also chat or have an audio or video call with other active participants, as well as manage your shared boards. Wow, that was a fantastic round of nine great techniques which will bring your Freeform game to the next level. If you have more questions or want to tell me how you are using Freeform, please leave me a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't be too shy to hit the like button, that's what it's for. Also, if you don't want to miss my regular updates, please hit the subscribe button. Now, if you are into Freeform, you also should be into using drag and drop on iOS. There is so much more you can do on an iPhone once you realize the insane power of drag and drop on an iPhone. Now go check it out with this video. Okay, that's it for now. See you soon. Bye.